Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. The Reverend Dr. Stephen Hokana is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. Psalm 30, whole verse by whole verse. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I have cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praise. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell you of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You've loosed my sackcloth, clothed me with gladness. That my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading appointed for today is Paul's letter to the church at Colossae, Colossians 2, beginning at the 8th verse. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elements of the spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head and all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the flesh, but the circumcision of Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks. Well, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. The basis for today's meditation is our appointed reading, Colossians 2, 8 through 13. The resident theme that I've selected for this text is the church and its Christ in him and with him. So in this polemic section, verse 8, the Apostle Paul warns sternly against false teachings. He says it clearly in verse 8 where he writes, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. But next follows a beautiful, almost poetic, hymn-like soliloquy. In an antiphonal manner, Paul starts out with a resonant theme of in him and responds antiphonally with him. Here's what I mean. Verses 9 through 11. And they sing. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily and you have been filled. In him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. 
So after the in him, which revolves around Christ's activity in our redemption, the divine becomes human, Jesus dwells in us, we enter into a holy covenant that supersedes circumcision, we move to the antiphonal with him response. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your fair flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. So both sections talk of redemption, forgiveness, new life, eternal life. Oh, but the second response raises this Holy Spirit composition to a whole new level. It starts in a very dark place. We were dead, crushed by our trespasses, unclean, unholy. It makes us consider a graphic picture, an impassioned plea, uh, an echo of Psalm 30 where David sings, To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. O Lord, be my helper. The manifest rescue of God in Christ, spelled out by the true God becoming true man, still maintaining his Godhead, is more than pulling us out of the pit, saving us from certain death, all of which are important. But he does something greater, something completely and totally unexpected. We are made saints. Paul intersperses the word circumcision throughout Colossians 2. Not like in days of old, but it is Jesus who brands us as a holy people. The understanding of circumcision as a covenantal act with God, making us by placing us under the realm of holiness. But call the apostle gives us with the term a new circumcision, the method to make set apart as God's people. Kadosh, a holy people, saints alive. Our circumcision is not physical as the apostle says with human hands, but by baptism, as Paul reminds us. Having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith and the powerful working of God, who raised him from the dead, and you, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Through Christ, we are now alive, set apart as holy, now washed, now clean, and now forgiven, restored, and loved. These words of sweet solace are so important. As we journey on our pilgrimage through life, we're confronted by tragic, sad, horrible events. Mike Tyson probably among the best fighters, professional boxers in history said, everybody has a plan until they get punched in the face. Luther describes these existential punches in the face as anfectum. The source and causality of this indeed is satanic. I mean, who else desires to have you pulled away from a loving God? And we are no different than in Luther's day. I am told that every five years, a person hits a crisis, a serious time, where all your tools in your toolbox, be they intellect, financial resources, rapier sharp wit, life experiences, physical strength, family, all utensils at your disposals cannot make the catastrophic move from instability to stability. The result is a crushed person. For us to understand what Luther is saying, he goes so far as to paint a picture based in our fallen nature that it feels as if God himself withdraws 
from his child. Luther wants us to understand the seriousness of being placed in a season of unfectum. Our life is not filled with sunshine, roses, and pink unicorns. It's dirty, it's gritty, it's vulgar, and it's visceral. Here's the greatness of Luther, giving a stern warning when in such a season. From the beginning, Satan was a liar. With lies, he misled Adam and Eve, and since then, he's never ceased to lie. With the lie, he brought death, and soon after that, he moved Cain to kill his brother. His kingdom continues to operate under these same principles of lying and deceiving. After Satan captures his victims, there is no festive celebration for them, but he troubles them with murder, unrest, and disobedience. Then, as he has brought people into murder and misfortune, he plagues them further about their sins, until finally they are without any hope. Take for an example Judas, who betrayed Christ. First he deceived himself with lies, then his soul was plagued because he was a traitor and a murderer of his own Lord Jesus. Finally, he despaired and hanged himself. Beware of Satan. He is a liar and a murderer. Whoever serves and obeys him must eventually pay him, as did Judas, his servant. Luther wants us to know the response to unfectum rests in grace alone. Romans chapter 1, 16 and 17, for the righteous shall live by faith. It is a part of life and a part of the Christian life. All the more we hear the resonant echo of the antiphonal chorus of Colossians 2, we are in him, we are with him. The time of great trial is a time of great temptation and a time of great despair. It is at this time that we look to the cross. We look to Jesus, true man and true God. We see the eternal comfort that comes down from heaven and suffers death nailed to its beams. In and with him, through faith given by the Holy Spirit in baptism, we fix our eyes on him. Just as those bitten by poisonous serpents with urgency did, they fixed their eye, turned to the serpent statue, and were saved, so we are called to, to look on Christ. These times in our life are a sentinel reminder where we indeed reside, but we rest on solid ground, surrounded by the walls of Fortress Jesus. We look again at our baptism. We set ourselves in confidence, perceptive that Christ resides in us, made alive only by him. We're forgiven, focused on Jesus, and placing our hope in him. And we ask this in his holy and precious name, the incarnate word made flesh, and magnificent eternal Son of God. Amen. Broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.